Although it's not the latest generation, the i5-14600K is a solid mid-range CPU and a great fit for a mid-range or upper mid gaming PC build. That said, choosing the right GPU to pair with it can be tricky. To make things easier, I've narrowed down the three best GPU options for the 14600K across different categories, so there's something for everyone in this video. Prices and all GPUs mentioned in this video are listed in the description below. First, my suggestion for a budget-friendly GPU to pair with the 14600K that doesn't cut too many corners is the Gigabyte RX 9060 XT Gaming OC. The Radeon RX 9060 XT is part of AMD's latest RDNA 4 lineup and directly targets NVIDIA's RTX 50 series mid-range cards. The RTX 5060 Ti is also a strong alternative in this category, offering solid 1080p and 1440p gaming performance, along with features like DLSS 4 and stronger ray tracing capabilities. In raw performance, the RX 9060 XT generally goes head-to-head -head with the RTX 5060 Ti, often edging it out slightly at 1440p, while usually costing less and running a bit more efficiently. It also trades blows with last-gen cards like the RTX 4060 Ti, pulling a head in VRAM heavy titles. Overall, it's a very competitive GPU for high refresh 1080p and entry to mid 1440p gaming. The RX 9060 XT is powered by AMD's Navi 44 GPU with 2048 stream processors, a reference boost clock of around 3.13 GHz, and 16GB of GDDR6 memory on a 128-bit bus. AMD rates memory bandwidth at 320GB per second, which is plenty for its target resolutions. The generous 16GB VRAM is a big plus for longevity as modern games continue to demand more memory, so you're far less likely to run into VRAM limitations anytime soon. Moving into design and build, the Gigabyte Gaming OC model comes with a solid cooling solution, factory overclock, and RGB lighting. It uses Gigabyte's Windforce 3X cooling system with distinctive Hawk-style fans. The card measures roughly 281mm in length and 118mm in height, with a reinforced frame and a triple fan layout that fits comfortably in most mid-tower and full-tower cases. With a total board power of about 150 to 160 watts on the 16 gigabytes version, the heatsink doesn't need to tackle extreme thermal loads, which helps keep temperatures and noise levels under control. The card also supports semi-passive operation, where the fans stop or spin very slowly at idle, making everyday use quieter. In real-world gaming, the RX 9060 XT performs exceptionally well for 1080p high-refresh gaming and remains very capable at 1440p with some settings tweaks in the most demanding titles. You can expect smooth performance across modern games, comfortably exceeding 120 FPS in many competitive esports titles, and landing roughly in the 70 to 100 FPS range in heavier AAA games at 1440p with ultra or high settings, depending on the title and whether you use FSR. That being said, pairing this GPU with a decent CPU like the i5-14600K will give you high frame rates without needing a CPU upgrade anytime soon. For those building a budget-friendly setup, this card checks most of the right boxes. Unless you specifically prioritize ray tracing performance or DLSS features, the RX 9060 XT is a superb choice if you want strong real-world performance without overspending. To sum it up, what I like is the strong 1080p and very solid 1440p performance, the efficient 150 to 160 watt power draw for the 16 gigabyte model, the quiet operation under load with a good cooler, and the 16 gigabytes of VRAM for better future proofing. On the downside, ray tracing performance still lags behind Nvidia's competing cards, and the 128 bit memory bus can limit bandwidth at higher resolutions in a few edge cases. Next, if you want to pair the i5-14600K with a premium GPU, my suggestion is the Asus TUF Gaming RTX 5080 16GB. Built on NVIDIA's Blackwell architecture, the RTX 5080 brings notable improvements over the RTX 4080, including 16GB of GDDR7 memory, a 256-bit bus, and a massive 960GB per second of memory bandwidth. It also gives you full access to NVIDIA's latest AI-driven tools like DLSS 4 with multi-frame generation, improved ray tracing performance, and all the quality-of-life features the RTX platform is known for. 
The previous generation RTX 4080 and 4080 Super still deliver strong performance, especially for 1440p and 4K gaming, but the RTX 5080 typically offers roughly 10 to 20% higher frame rates in many modern titles. That extra headroom is noticeable if you're pushing a high refresh 1440p display or want smoother 4K performance, and it also adds a bit more future proofing for upcoming AAA releases. Under the hood, the tough gaming card sticks to its usual industrial aesthetic, with a reinforced shroud, sturdy metal backplate, and a beefy multi-slot cooler. NVIDIA rates the RTX 5080 at 360 watts total graphics power. In real-world gaming, you'll typically see the card pulling somewhere in the high 200s to low 300s of watts, with short spikes closer to that 360 watt ceiling in heavier loads, especially on factory overclocked models like this tough card. With a good case and reasonable airflow, GPU temperatures generally sit in the mid to upper 60 degrees Celsius, and thanks to large fin stacks, vapor chamber cooling, and a triple fan design, fan noise tends to stay in a comfortable mid 30 decibel range rather than being obnoxiously loud. When it comes to performance, the RTX 5080 handles 1440p high refresh gaming with ease and offers very solid 4K performance as well. In many independent benchmarks, it tends to show a low double-digit percentage lead over the RTX 4080 or 4080 Super at 1440p, and an even larger lead at 4K in some titles, especially with ray tracing enabled. In games like Black Myth Wukong or Dying Light 2 with ray tracing on, you're generally looking at a 10-15% to 15 uplift versus the 4080 at 1440p, with frame rates that feel noticeably smoother on high refresh monitors. The only real caution is that this is a high-end card, so your power supply and case cooling need to be up to the task. NVIDIA and Asus both recommend at least an 850 watt quality PSU for systems using an RTX 5080, especially if you plan to overclock or pair it with a power-hungry CPU and multiple drives or accessories. If you meet those requirements, all that power translates into excellent performance with the RTX 5080 delivering comfortably playable 1440p results at ultra settings and strong 4K performance in many modern titles. And with 16GB of VRAM, it's well positioned for upcoming games as texture sizes and VRAM usage continue to grow. So given its total package of performance, features, and build quality, the RTX 5080 is hard to pass up for anyone building a 14600 k gaming PC and is not constrained by budget. To sum it up, what I like is the strong thermal headroom with an effective triple fan tough cooler, the premium Asus tough build quality and durability, the robust PCB and power delivery that handle sustained loads well, and the excellent 1440p and very capable 4K performance, plus DLSS 4 and advanced ray tracing. On the downside, high power draw and an 850 watt class PSU requirement, and the premium pricing that's overkill if you're sticking to basic 1080p gaming. Finally, my top choice that balances performance, efficiency, and value is the Gigabyte RTX 5070 Ti Gaming OC 16GB. The RTX 5070 Ti is designed for gamers who want near-flagship performance without spending a small fortune. Built on NVIDIA's Blackwell architecture, it offers improved power efficiency, stronger ray tracing capabilities, and a noticeable jump in CUDA core count and AI performance compared to the RTX 4070 Ti and 4070 Ti Super. The older 4070 Ti still performs well at 1440p and can handle 4K with some compromises, but the newer 5070 Ti narrows the gap to higher-end cards while often being priced fairly close, making it a smarter pick for many gamers. In real-world use, the RTX 5070 Ti pushes comfortably into what used to be flagship-level performance, while staying well-suited for high-refresh 1440p gaming. Across modern titles, aggregated benchmarks typically show roughly a 13-17% to uplift in average frame rates compared to the RTX 4070 Ti at 1440p. For example, at 1440p ultra settings, you're looking at roughly 149 FPS on the 5070 Ti versus roughly 128 FPS on the 4070 Ti in averaged test suites. 
In competitive 1080p games, frame rates commonly range from about 160 to 190 FPS, while more demanding AAA titles at 1440p ultra settings often land in the 120 to 150 FPS range. That puts this card in an excellent spot for gamers who want a smooth, high refresh experience without sacrificing visual quality. The Gigabyte Gaming OC variant in particular deserves praise for its cooling solution and overall design. It uses a robust triple fan wind force setup, multiple composite heat pipes, a large heatsink, and a well-tuned PCB and power delivery design. With a total board power of around 300 watts, the cooler keeps the GPU in the mid 60s degrees Celsius under sustained gaming loads while remaining reasonably quiet. On the memory side, the RTX 5070 Ti comes with 16GB of GDDR7 on a 256-bit bus, delivering about 896GB per second of memory bandwidth. That combination of VRAM capacity and bandwidth gives it an edge when dealing with high-resolution textures, complex ray-traced lighting, or future AAA titles that lean heavily on VRAM. Thermally and acoustically, the Gigabyte Gaming OC is among the more refined designs in its class. It runs cool, quiet, and consistently stable. You'll still want a quality 750 watt or higher PSU and proper case airflow to get the best out of it, which is in line with Nvidia's recommendations for this performance tier. Overall, the RTX 5070 Ti Gaming OC is a very well-rounded choice that lands right in the sweet spot between mid-range and high-end. It delivers exceptional 1440p performance, solid 4K potential with some settings tweaks, and impressive efficiency for its power class. This card really stands out as one of the most balanced GPUs in its price bracket, powerful, relatively quiet, and genuinely future-ready without being absolute overkill. To sum up, what I like is the excellent balance of price, performance, efficiency, and thermals, the strong 1440p and entry-level 4K performance, the 16GB of VRAM and high memory bandwidth that help with future-proofing, and the access to DLSS4 and advanced ray tracing features. On the downside, it's not ideal if your main focus is maxed out 4K ray tracing in every game, and 300 watts board power still means that you'll need a decent 750 watt PSU and good airflow.